measure the efficacy of a design solution, it needs to be monitored and assessed according to data that are relevant and significant for both the business and the user's point of view. This video will provide insights into the monitoring and assessment of solutions, starting from defining such activities and why they need to be conducted. We will shed light on the assessment process methodologies and tools that may be applied in different contexts with a focus on intangible artifacts like policies. Assessment within responsible research and innovation and policy contexts has not only been discussed as particularly important in literature, but is also an emerging request of organizations and entities dealing with innovation initiatives. This particular attention towards responsible research and innovation and policy making can be related to the following points. At first, the newness of the field and its methodologies require a proof of its impact not only in terms of their outcomes, but also of the approach itself. Secondly, intangible outcomes like policies are very abstract to stakeholders, users and investors, and therefore the need to translate them into tangible factors is a proof of both their success and potential. Responsible research and innovation and policy making are struggling to demonstrate impact and define clear pathways for the assessment due to their complexity and long-term orientation. This makes the process of monitoring and assessment relevant and urgent matters to address. Before deepening the monitoring and assessment process and tools, we need to define their meaning. Monitoring is the observation and investigation of the progress of quality over a given period of time keeping it under systematic review. Therefore, monitoring describes the observation and supervision of a process during which data on change and activities is collected. Assessment defines the phase in which the data collected is analyzed and evaluated according to predefined parameters and indicators. While the first step, monitoring, does only include the collection of data, during the assessment phase, the data is checked against a predefined framework and therefore given significance and importance according to certain parameters of evaluation. The process of data collection and interpretation helps break down a complex process into single aspects and transform abstract elements into tangible ones that can be evaluated according to precise indicators and criteria. There are various reasons to monitor and assess processes and developments. In established processes, monitoring is fundamental to guarantee consistent quality as well as shedding light on irregularities and problems materializing within the process. Assessment becomes particularly important when speaking about intangible subjects like, for instance, policies. Their assessment requires them to be measurable so that the creators, managers and stakeholders can rely on data for gauging effectiveness. This intangibility otherwise often hinders comprehension. On the other hand, it has also to deal with their iterative nature. Such ongoing processes prevent the application of traditional evaluation parameters. While established products, services and processes are often assessed to ensure consistency, new ones need to be measured to determine their success or failure while identify their weaknesses and strong points. Depending on the elements to be measured, methods and procedures of assessment can largely vary. There is a clearly no one-size-fits-all. Moreover, further complexity is added when dealing with services or products not fully implemented or still in the prototyping or testing phase, as is often the case when applying co-creation. Regardless of all of the above, every assessment follows a similar basic sequence. At first, the factors of measurements and evaluation need to be defined, clarifying which aspects of the process are relevant and need to be assessed. This is paramount since the absence of predefined criteria can affect data collection by posing the attention on not sufficiently significant on only primary aspects. After defining the factors of measurement, the appropriate tools to capture those are chosen. I'll go more in depth on what kind of tools could be potentially applied here in a few minutes. During the process of data collection, all the previously defined information is recorded throughout the process that is the object of the assessment. The evaluation according to the parameters defined should lead to reflections on possible improvements and the definition of next steps. After making changes and moving forward, an iteration of the assessment can shed light on the success of those improvements. It is difficult gathering sufficient amounts of data for a quantitative analysis, especially when smaller scale experimentations are tested. 
In these cases, specific tools to conduct a qualitative analysis can be applied. Qualitative data does not only focus on numbers or statistics, but rather on single insights about user behaviors, feedback, comments or reactions. Such small insights can be precious hints on particularly strong or problematic points noticed by the end user. These insights allow the identification of those weak or strong points that should be improved or highlighted. Assessment does not only allow to measure success, but also makes it tangible to be used as a proof for investors or stakeholders following specific predefined criteria. Even though the data collected during the first assessment is often of qualitative nature and does not yet allow quantitative results, it provides evidence on the functioning of a process, service or product. Tools for quantitative analysis are usually based on simple measurements of time or profit. For example, the time taken by the end user to complete a specific action. It needs to be said that the sample size has to be quite extensive in order to produce a representative data set for a group of users. To grasp qualitative insights, there are various tools for collecting data related to spontaneous thoughts and impressions from users. Those are precious to figure out the user's point of view, as well as to understand if expectations and results are aligned. We will now have a look at some qualitative tools and their applications. Interviews are guided one-on-one -on -one conversations to explore the personal experience of a user going in-depth on their thoughts, feelings and impressions around one specific personal experience. Independently of the sample size, surveys allow both qualitative and quantitative data collection. According to the kind of questions and the length of the questionnaire, the outcomes can be almost close to the ones of an interview or collect relatively neutral data on the functionality of single elements. Observation defines a direct investigation conducted watching users when handling the service or product. The collected data can be photos of video material or notes taken by the observer on how users behave and interact, what they say, as well as the overall impression they make during the operation. To sum up, the importance of assessment emerged especially for intangible matters, such as policies and services, and require precise planning to be successful. Assessment can then be a powerful instrument for the improvement of specific aspects of an initiative or an entire project. Moreover, monitoring and assessment allow us to collect evidence and proof of potential benefits for users and stakeholders.